With all the hype and hate that AI video is getting lately, is there anything useful it can actually do other than generate slop to clog up our social media feeds? Well, today we're gonna find out. I'm gonna show you some of the most practical AI tools that I've been using on a regular basis to augment my existing video editing workflow. This isn't about generating commodity junk content, it's how do we actually make something better with the tools available to us today. So first up, AI has totally reshaped how I think about slow motion. We can do so many more things with it right now. And this is a barrel race that I just recorded recently and I want to massively slow it down. Now I'll mention that we're looking at this in Final Cut Pro, that's my default editor of choice. It's what I use most of the time. These tools are available in other places like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. So I will tell you where to find those tools and they do work similarly across the different video editing apps. So we've got this overall race just going really fast. And let's say I just want to slow things down for the home stretch here. So typically I'd select the clip, go over here to my speed tools and I would just go to slow, let's say 50%. Now this is pretty good because I actually shot this clip in 60 frames per second. It slows down nicely, but I want this moment to really last. I want to savor it. So what we can do is select the clip, go even slower to smooth slow-mo and we can drop way below 50%. Let's go to 25%. You see, it's going to take a minute to analyze the machine learning. This happens on the computer. And as we see, it is called Optical Flow here in Final Cut Pro. That's the same name that you're gonna find in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere. So whichever editor you're using, that's what you're looking for, Optical Flow. Make sure it's the AI-based one because it didn't used to look this good before AI got involved where it's interpreting the frames in between. Suddenly it's amazing. Now that we've let this thing for a second, let's play it again. Dang, yeah, so now that is proper slow motion, we've really brought it down. So we can actually slow this down all the way to 10%. See what that looks like. But first, remind ourselves, what does regular slow motion look like? So this is no AI. It just, it's like stopping on every single frame. This is why we need the enhancement because typically it's just unusable. I would never slow footage down to the point that you can see that stagger. Now that I have my timing menu available, I can click right here and say smooth slow-mo 10%. And after it's thought about it, here we go. I mean, that's pretty cool too. I'd say like it stops being so realistic. We're seeing some artifacting here in the hooves. It's having to like create a lot of detail that's not there because this is a relatively blurry image. She's just moving so fast. But it's also like kind of usable depending on the project. You could suddenly insert something that just feels totally hyper real. I just love this tool and I use it at 50% all the time just to stretch footage out a little bit longer. This next one is probably what I use like the most often. This is in so many of my videos lately and that is an AI smart mask. So I open up my effects here in Final Cut Pro and here it's called Magnetic Mask and I'm gonna just drop that onto the clip. If you're looking for it in Resolve, it's called Magic Mask. They actually did this first and it does such an amazing job. I kind of like the results in Final Cut more, but Resolve is right there. And then Premiere just added theirs recently. It's called Object Selection and hopefully it can do the same thing, but I haven't had a chance to try it yet. I'm just glad to see that it's everywhere now because it's just so powerful. So I'll open up my inspector on the right here, make sure the mask is selected and I just need to click on whatever I want to be included and it just like kind of nailed it right away. It selected me. I'm going to click analyze. All right, but why are we even adding this title? Let's close our inspector, open up my motion VFX titles, and I'm going to drop one of them on top of everything here. And what I want this to say is iPhone. Over here, it's going to say 17 Pro. So, so far, it doesn't really make sense, right? We've just got a mask and a title. Okay, here's where the magic happens. So if we click done, it's going to remove that whole background. It's all black now. So I'm going to copy this just me layer with the mask. I'm going to paste and move it to the top of the frame. Now this bottom one, I can remove the mask here. So the background comes back. And now suddenly I am sitting in front of the text that is floating behind me. You've seen this a million times. This is not the most advanced thing in the world, but it is so effective. I just love adding this in subtle little ways and you can just play around with it after. As soon as your mask is made, there are a ton of different options you have of how this will be displayed. And it can also work with color grading. Like the mask could be added to my grade directly, but here I could just start messing with the color of the room just behind me. And then the color of me stays natural even where I'm completely changing the rest of the room. I'm sure you can think of some ways to use this tool. It's crazy powerful. And I'm glad to see it in all of the video editing software that we use. Now let's combine some tools. We're gonna to use that smart mask to add some clouds to the sky. And then we're gonna use even more AI tools to animate them. And this stuff I just have been figuring out lately. Like these are brand new tools and they're made possible by the sponsor of this video, Artlist. I'm gonna reset everything. Let's go back to just the regular blue sky. 
So this is what things look like in reality. And this is actually nice. It's a blue sky. Often I'd be doing this if there is a white sky, but it's just not overcast right now. So I couldn't get a sample that had a blown out sky, but you can really use it in any environment. So what we're gonna do is find a frame that the sky is mostly visible. I'm not blocking it. And I'm just gonna export one single frame. In Final Cut, you do that by share, save current frame. And now I log into my Artlist account and I'm gonna to head to AI image and video image to image, and this is using the new nano banana model. You must have heard about this lately. It's completely insane. Like it'll take existing images and without transforming the substance of them, you can kind of add and manipulate them in a million different ways. Like this might be the craziest application of it all. I don't even know how I'm gonna start using this for clients, but this is a photo we shot for a hotel client, right? I mean, it's a nice shot. We weren't mostly shooting exteriors, so this was kind of an add-on. Like we're shooting lifestyles, mostly of people. But we got this photo in the middle of the day. It, it's, you know, it's got a nice sky. It looks okay, but it's not a super premium hotel shot. For that, you usually want to set up like right around sunset and get something a little more like this. This is incredible. This is the shot that you would spend all day setting up for and be ready just as the sun goes down and hope that the sky is perfect. I mean, flipping back and forth, it really preserves the whole shape of the hotel. I'm like, I'm so blown away by this. There's still some little things to work out because the resolution isn't the same as I'd usually provide to a client. I, there's no, I couldn't composite this in a million years and it still retains all of the real essence of the hotel. I'm, 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 like, I'm still kind of in shock that this is possible and I don't know how I will use this in my workflow. But let's get back to video editing. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that frame I exported Decide which model I want to use. Again, I love this Nano Banana. That's definitely what I'll be using right now. And the prompt I'm going to use is add realistic puffy white clouds to the sky and keep everything else the same. Then I just click generate and wait a moment. And there it is. What's really impressive about this is that it understands the lighting of the scene. So the sky it creates fits naturally, even if you're changing it quite a bit. So from here, I want to upscale it. The upscale goes really quickly and then download the frame. And I'm going to drag that into my video project. So. One thing you can see is that it is not perfect at keeping it the same. Like you can see there's a shift there, so I can't just mask this in as it is. I still need to take another step. So I click transform image. It brings it back into my image to image up at the top. And my prompt is remove everything except the sky, just all sky with a simple concrete horizon on the ground. This is to clear away all the buildings, all of that. Let's see what it does. Perfect, now with those same clouds matching the lighting, except there's nothing else in the frame. I'm gonna upscale that. And now I'm gonna drop this into my timeline and this is more like it. Okay, great. Right now it's over top of my footage. In this example, it's a little more helpful if I put it below in Final Cut, I can press option down to move things on the timeline like that. As you can see, it's not visible. So we're gonna go back to our magic mask over here. I'm gonna drag it onto the clip, select the sky and say analyze. There's a few ways you could do this mask. You could also use a color mask, but because I'm walking in front of it, I just found the results worked best using the magnetic mask. It's up to you exactly how you do this. But that's it, I click done. My mask is hiding the wrong thing here, so I'm gonna invert it over here on the right. Click invert masks, and there we go. We've got a sky, and I can walk right in front of it. It matches the lighting. It fits naturally into the scene. I mean, this just kind of blows me away. And so I have a second shot here. I could just add the same clouds if I wanted, like that's kind of the easiest way. Also need a magnetic mask on here. Do a quick track. And now I've got another replaced sky. I'd probably regenerate it for each shot, but I'm just amazed how well this works. Like the challenge is usually finding clouds that fit because it needs to match the horizon distance and the focal length and all of that is just calculated by the AI. But we could take this one step further because Artlist also has a video generation. So let's go back to that image we created. We can say animate, and it's gonna suggest a prompt, but I'm really specific about what I want it to do here. So I'm gonna delete the automatic prompt, and I'm gonna say keep the camera static as if it's on a tripod. The clouds slowly drift through the sky and everything else stays still, very little movement to the frame. This is not a time-lapse because it's gonna want to move them more quickly. Just, I, I know that it does that. So you're gonna say very slowly. And I could do this with the standard model. I know it'd be good enough for clouds, but they also have VO3, which is amazing from Google. Again, it can just like create anything and it looks surprisingly realistic. So let's crank it up like that. I'm also gonna turn up the resolution to full HD. It can also generate audio, which uh, I don't know, let's just do it for fun. I don't know what it's gonna sound like and hit animate. All right, and our clouds are on the move. Let's upscale this to 4K so it matches the footage. 
We've already got our masks in place, so now we just need to drop the footage and instantly we've got some moving clouds. This is too fast. This is going uh, like a time lapse, which I kind of knew it would. So instead, I'm going to use my smooth slow motion again, drop it down to 50%. And now I've got something much more dramatic going on behind me. To make this more realistic, I could also drop another version of that first layer on the bottom and make our clouds a lower opacity. And this will just sell it a little more. I'll go down to maybe 65. There we go. I mean, I spent years like taking photos for cloud libraries and now I can just generate stills and then animate them. It's wild. And I've been using Artlist since way before they had these AI tools, especially for music and sound effects. That is still how I put the audio into every single video that I publish. So yeah, definitely check out Artlist in the description below. There's a link if you want to try it out. Next, let's clean up some audio. So I just recorded this a minute ago. It's a beautiful day outside, which is great, except that I have to turn off my air conditioning while I record because it interferes with the audio. If only there was a way I could cut out the extra noise from the AC. Okay, great. Uh, sounds okay, but there's that buzz that's constantly going in the background. How will we get rid of it? Well, in Final Cut, the way to do it is we select our clip, go to the inspector, and I mean, it's so easy, it's laughable. You just click on voice isolation. I mean, that's it. And then there's just one slider. So let's just hear the difference. This is what it sounds like before the noise removal. And this is what it sounds like after the noise removal. It's very non-destructive and will keep most of the original quality. I'm usually using it around 30% because I wouldn't actually record so close to an air conditioner, but you can't always control your environment. And if you want to do this in DaVinci Resolve, it's called Dialogue Isolation. And from what I'm told, it sounds the best in DaVinci. Like it's even more magical. There's a little more tweaking you can do. Because I do find in Final Cut, it's a little too simple. Sometimes I want to like manipulate the settings a bit more. And I think Resolve probably handles this the best. And then in Premiere Pro, it's called Speech Isolation. And I haven't used it in Premiere Pro, but it's in there as well. Next is something we all have to deal with when we're posting vertical content, especially, and that's captions. I'm sure you found a way that you do it. I'm gonna show you how I like to do it right now because there's a million ways, but this is very impressive to me. So I like to use CapCut specifically on the desktop because then I just have the most control of what's going on. I just recorded a sample clip of me talking here. There's a lot of times when you wanna add captions to a video and unfortunately Final Cut Pro is still not very good at it even though they have a built-in AI tool. So let's start by just clicking generate. And this isn't a very long clip, but it works for whatever you want. And Here's what I love about CapCut, much better than Final Cut Pro, is the way that it manages the text. So if I just like select one of the clips, let's say, first of all, it has a ton of different uh, presets built in so I can make the text kind of look like anything I want. And as I make those changes, it affects all of the clips inside of the whole video. There's also templates with like way more creative and interesting styles of text that you're not gonna to wanna to animate on your own, but you would have to in Final Cut. And then things like, as you change the font size, it's actually smart about uh, scaling where it places it. Uh, it applies it to all the clips. There's just so many things you'll have to dig in to find them all, but the way that it works with captions is very smart. So usually I'll finish my full video, export a final version of the file, and that's what I'm working with in CapCut, and I just apply the captions to the final product so fast. I, this is the best way to do it. And while we're talking about dialogue and audio, this one is amazing. Also very new to be able to do this. Uh, so I've got a little just A-roll talking head here. It's kind of a voiceover. You know, let's hear what I have to say. So what I'm gonna be most excited about is the new selfie camera. It has a brand new 80 megapixel sensor. That is a huge improvement. Wait, I think I got that wrong. I said 80 megapixel. That's not right at all. So I need to fix that one piece of dialogue. How do I do it? I can go to file and export a WAV file. So just audio, and I'm gonna put that in the same folder as everything else. And I'm gonna come back to Artlist and go to AI VoiceOver, and this, this blows me away. So I'm gonna go over here to the right where it says clone a voice, and all I need to do is drag and drop that voiceover from the one minute of talking that I did. I'm gonna name my voice Tyler1 in case I retrain it in a different audio environment. Now I just select that voice, I'm gonna enter the exact text of the section that I wanna replace. It has a brand new 18 megapixel sensor. And there's a bunch of parameters, like I could change my accent and I could speed it up. I don't need to do any of that for this. I'm just gonna say generate. And now I can just drop that clip in my timeline. Just splice out the part that is a mistake and check this out. So what I'm gonna be most excited about is the new selfie camera. It has a brand new 
18 megapixel sensor. That is a huge improvement. Nobody will ever know how many mistakes I make in videos again. This is so useful. And now I've got one big time saver left. This does work whichever editing program you're in. It's called Gling. And for this example, I use the A roll for my recent iPhone 17 video. Just drop it in. And there's a bunch of stuff that Gling can do. Uh, I'm gonna use Edit with AI because that is what's most powerful to me. Um, you could paste your script in here if you have one, I don't. And I'm just gonna click Continue. And here's all the stuff it can do. Uh, I don't need it to add a like and subscribe button or remove filler words, that is too aggressive. The powerful stuff here is cut silences and especially cut bad takes. I need that. So enhance and edit. And when you're done, you're gonna get something that looks like this. It's all the text of everything that you said. And if you play it, it just plays back like an edited video and it's already removed all of the mistakes. Like, especially when I say something redundant, which I, I do all the time. I'll say a line, then I realize I could have said it better and I'll say it again. It understands that I'm saying the same phrase a couple times and just remove all of that. This helps so much in my editing. I just like throw my A roll in here and in a fraction of the time I can be done. And when I am done, all I need to do is say export. And I've got a few different options. You can see I can export it for either Premiere, Final Cut or Resolve. Usually I'll use the Final Cut Multicam so that I can go in and make multicam changes. It's also compatible with CapCut, Shorts. I mean, you can just record the final video and do all of it within here. This is super helpful. So if you've made it this far, I hope that means you found a few new uses for AI in your editing and realize it's probably not gonna replace you anytime soon. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you in the next video.